So, if you've been uh, following my videos recently, you'll know that I've been playing with an AI IP CCTV camera system from a company called Ava. And it's really clever. And I wanted to do more with it. And the last video I, I filmed, I said well, what I was going to do is put it in a place where I could monitor more people and see more traffic and, and just see, uh, see what it could do. Now the trouble is, where I live here, there was really nowhere convenient for me to mount a camera that had a good view of lots of foot traffic and, uh, and vehicle traffic. So I had to think of a, a way to somehow get that uh, camera seeing more things uh, so I could have a play with the software. And of course, being me, I decided that the best way to do that would be to mount it on a vehicle. Uh, so, and not just any vehicle, what I've got here, and I'm about to show you, is, um, is my electric moped, and I've managed to mount the Ava camera on it. Let me show you how. So, what we've got here is my Bumblebee electric scooter. How cool is that? Uh, it's a 30 mile per hour uh, lead acid powered scooter. And look at what we've got on the front there. How cool is that? The Ava camera. See the Ava branding on the bottom. <laughs> Mounted, fairly jewelry rigged. This is a, a bit of plastic holding that together. Uh, if you look around the back, there'll be a bit of hot glue. And we've got a Cat 7 cable coming out the top, which at the moment is rooted uh, through the body of the, of the bike and then up and goes into the back here of the helmet box. And now the helmet box has got a nice new addition. We've got a Petwave 421G antenna on there. And that's because in here we have got some cool stuff. We've got a Petwave UBR and that is doing PoE out for us to power the camera. And we've also got a Raspberry Pi because what I'm also doing here is playing with VideoSoft low bandwidth video streaming on the go as well. Um, so this is dual cellular and I'm bonding the cellular connectivity. Right now it's three and Vodafone UK and, uh, and I'm powering it with a lead from the, from the wall at the moment. I did have a battery in here, battery's in on charge so I can go do another run later. But how cool is that? So we've got a scooter, or a moped really, an electric one, uh, with internet connectivity, GPS tracking, and now uh, AI uh, IP camera on the front. I doubt anyone's put an Ava camera on a moped yet. Let's, uh, let's go have a closer look and see what, uh, what the footage is like. So here we are, or here I am, starting off from my house and uh, taking a quick turn into the local housing estate. And you can immediately see that Ava Aware is identifying the vehicles or making a very good attempt at doing so. Because let's, let's not forget, this system wasn't designed for the camera to be moving. Uh, so we're breaking a lot of its laws or its physics, I would imagine, by, uh, by making the camera move. Oh, and here's a prime example. So um, I left the orientation sensor enabled on the camera. So as I went around the corner there, it thought the camera had turned uh, and was, you know, effectively went to portrait on us. But uh, even though I'm pretty sure the system wasn't designed to do this, uh, the aware solution is still finding, we can see blue boxes on the right when it sees people, and we've got purple boxes here where it's identifying the vehicles. So it's doing a pretty good job, and particularly at the pace that we're currently going at. Uh, I say pace, it's only a moped, it's only about 30 miles an hour. Um, so I basically, I took the bike with the uh, with the camera running, and I went and did a trip around the um, housing estate, and around the, there's an industrial estate near me as well. And then I popped in to see some friends at their office. So I'll speed this video up now, so you can see what happened. And, uh, and where I went, there's a, a little GPS tracker in the top right hand corner. Uh, that actually comes from the cellular router. It's got inbuilt GPS and its own mapping. Uh, so that kind of lets you know the sort of route that I was on. And I'll come back uh, once we got to the end of the video or the end of the journey. 
So right here, what I've just arrived at my friend's uh, office, and I have uh, want to just step in here and point out the fact that uh, AWARE is, is identifying all of the vehicles. It's also just drawn a, uh, a blue box around the chap that's just walked out and walked his car and gone back in again. And indeed, it spots me when as I leave the office as well, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, right now, we're on the trip back to my house, so it's not much longer now. And along this trip, we can see that uh, AWARE is spotting all of the vehicles. It's drawing lots of lovely boxes around it. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see the uh, the purple there in the graph that shows us how the vehicle detection, and then we've got the blue to show the people detection. Uh, so yeah, it, it, all in all, I, I'm really impressed with the camera. It's done a great job of vehicle and human detection along this path. And to show that, let's jump into the next uh, video uh, where I am actually looking at the search functions. Okay, so we've seen the video footage that I got from my electric moped, and you'll have seen how um, the footage itself is actually pretty rough and raw, isn't it, right? It was all bouncy. Uh, I'm leaning over on the bicycle. The, I'm cycling into or riding into the sunlight on many occasions. There's, uh, But at the same time, Ava did a pretty good job of spotting um, vehicles and people and we saw that uh, in the detection earlier on but perhaps well, and certainly the whole reason I did this in the first place was to be able to uh, demonstrate the search capability and that's what we're going to do next I'm going to record this bit again so I've shown you the raw video footage that I got from the Ava camera mounted on the electric moped uh, shooting around the neighborhood and uh, and it w it is fairly raw and it's really unfair of me the Ava um, aware AI isn't really designed with this usage type uh, in place right it doesn't it isn't expecting the camera itself to move it's expecting to be stationary and monitoring things around it that are moving but at the same time it did a really good job of uh, drawing boxes around vehicles and around the people that it saw what I'm going to show you now is the search function, which is one of the coolest bits of this, I think. Uh, let's dive straight in. So to run search, we come into Ava Aware and we click search. And it's a bit of a wizard, so we can go through and say, well, uh, actually what I want to do is find uh, vehicles. Uh, we can do all vehicles, but then we saw a lot of those on the video, so let's just do red vehicles for now. Uh, and we want it from this camera because that's the one that was mounted on my bike and uh, and the last 12 hours because I did the ride this morning. So let's do a search on that. Now look at that. Uh, in barely a second, it's gone through and found all of the red cars that it saw in the video footage. So let's click on one of these and see what it gives us. Uh, that's a bit of a, a... Oh no, there it is, look, a video, a red car driving past me stationary uh, in the car park here. Now you'll see uh, that it's got the map overlay that I used in a previous demo, but of course it has no idea. It's guessing it's wrong, right? Because the, the, the camera is now rather than on my shed is on the bike. So we'll ignore the map on the left. Let's see the other examples. Uh, so let's see what this one here is. Here we are, riding the bike, looking for a red car. And it spot one, spots one on the right there. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Off on the right. Spotted that very easily. So you could see how if somebody told you that, uh, you know, there was a theft and the, the bad guys were driving a blue car or a red car, uh, how you could select 100 cameras and uh, tell it to look for red cars in the last 10 minutes. And you'd get very quickly a snapshot of all the red cars that the cameras had seen. Uh, well, let's do a new search and let's look this time for people and we'll leave that uh, as is uh, because I think this is a, again a bit of an unfair test uh, last 12 hours because the camera footage was so oh look here we go uh, right so a couple of me up there uh, doing a video of the of the bike earlier on but these are interesting who are these what are these ones here Oh, look at that. So that's somebody in a yellow top on the pavement over there. That's very clever. 
whilst I'm waiting in traffic. Um, and what's this one here? Cycling, motoring along. Oh, it's done detection of those people there on the right. See that again? That's very good, isn't it? One up there. So that same road, and it spotted somebody over there on the right. Very cool. So we can select that video. Uh, and this is the, the other bit. So let's grab the videos uh, of the people that we just rode past. That one there and that one there. So I've got three uh, selected videos. And what can I do with that? Can I, oh, I can save them. I can export them. Let's export them. Uh, and call it an MP. Yeah, let's do that. Export. Oh, my word. Look how quick that is. Immediately. I wonder how, much, I wonder how big that video is going to be. I didn't pay much attention to the export there, I have to say. Um, is it exporting all video between uh, the time periods? No, it stopped. Let's have a look. So let's open that up. Okay, we've got three videos. What are the text files? Text files show us. Uh, for each video clip, which camera, and at what time the, the footage started and stopped. Let's double click and open up the video and there we are that's that video snippet that we saw earlier on but in full res so we can uh, pause that and we would be able to you know if this was not moving and shaking around on a bike uh, you could imagine how we would then have some really good uh, stills there we could grab out if we wanted to so uh, that search it's extraordinarily powerful again I've only got a single camera and I've really just stressed the system a little bit by putting it onto a, a, a moped to try and get this footage but you can imagine and see I'm sure how this would be extraordinarily powerful if you had multiple cameras monitoring you know fix multiple cameras uh, monitoring an area a shop a supermarket a car park and uh, and you need to, to, to identify somebody and then find uh, them again right um, and see them see that person on on wherever whatever camera they've appeared on very clever